Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, and um, I just want to give you a little bit of an update to the Moxon Antenna project. Uh, the Moxon Antenna is something I've been working on for the last few weeks. It's a 15 meter Moxon beam antenna that I will be deploying at a field day this year. Uh, last week, or the pro one previous video uh, to the, from, the, from the last one, uh, you saw me build the Moxon antenna and I used uh, for my wire uh, for the radiator and uh, the reflecting element uh, 14 gauge uh, stranded wire and uh, PVC spreaders uh, between the, the main element and uh, the reflected element. And it worked well, but uh, what happened is when I put the um, uh, the, the wire onto the spreaders, which were um, fishing uh, fi uh, fiberglass fishing poles, we had a lot of sag. And um, while the sag isn't terribly concerning, um, it's, it's not going to really affect the performance too much, but um, it does look a little bit unsightly. So um, we had some great comments on the video, and if you want to, if you scroll through those, you'll get, some, you'll get some great advice if you're thinking of building an antenna like this yourself. But um, a couple of really good comments I got was from Chuck, uh, KK6USY. Uh, He's built uh, several of those types of antennas, and uh, what he does is instead of using the 14 gauge wire is something much, much thinner. Um, he's actually using a 26 gauge uh, stealth, uh, but uh, I had a supply of 20 gauge uh, PVC coated uh, wire in, <laughs> in my, in my uh, parts bin. So I didn't have to buy anything, but um, I just used this uh, roll of wire and uh, it uh, shrunk the weight of the uh, elements uh, drastically uh, between uh, going with the um, 14 gauge uh, stranded. This is uh, 409 grams. This is 127 grams, <laughs> a third the weight. So um, makes a big difference. Um, three times heavier uh, than going this route. So uh, this is what I'm gonna, I'll bring the old stuff with me uh, for at, at field day, just in case we have a problem and um, I can't make this work, but I'm confident this will work. So uh, we'll, bring, we'll bring it with me, but we're gonna use this one uh, come field day. Uh, Chuck also had a second tip that was really, really good. And I wanted to share it with you uh, because I was using PVC as the um, separator uh, with a Moxon antenna. It's a two element Yagi antenna. So you got your driven element um, with it, which is like a, which a dipole with the ends folded over. And then you got the reflected element behind it, which is like a little bit longer dipole with the ends folded up. And um, between the two, you use um, some type of material to kind of um, give it that rectangular structure, but also to um, insulate between the two sets of wires. I used PVC, it's a little bit heavy. Um, uh, for an ultra lightweight route, um, Chuck re recommended using a uh, nylon uh, line, fishing line. Uh, this is actually a little bit thicker than fishing line. This is from a weed whacker, uh, string trimmer line with just a couple of uh, ends on the uh, uh, ring terminals on the end. So super duper lightweight. This is only a few grams in weight. So it's, um, I, I think it's, it's gonna make a, a really big difference in the, in the overall um, structural integrity of the antenna. So thanks a lot, Chuck, for those two tips. They are greatly appreciated. And then finally, I had a question on what is the weight of the center connector. I 3D printed a center connector and I added an um, SO239 connector to it. Um, this is 33 grams, which is very lightweight. Uh, the next uh, type of connector, the next lightest connector that's probably on the market weighs 38 grams. So it's uh, a little bit lighter than that. I was surprised at how lightweight this is considering I was using um, number six uh, machine screws uh, for the mounting hardware. I might be able to, I could probably come up away uh, with uh, trimming this down even a little bit more. Get a couple more grams off of here if I can lose a couple of these screws. So it's uh, super lightweight. So uh, what I'm gonna do is um, we're gonna put this on the, um, we're gonna put this wire on the uh, spreaders, test fit everything here in the yard, make sure everything works, and um, then uh, we'll have it ready uh, for field day. Let's go. Go, go, go. Let's go. 
I've got the uh, 20 gauge wire stretched out onto the uh, spreaders, the uh, fiberglass fishing poles, and instantly you can see the difference that the flex is a lot less uh, with this lighter wire than it was with the 14 gauge that I was initially using. Uh, definitely makes a difference using the lighter wire, and I think we're going to go with this. Uh, what I did find, though, <laughs> that uh, when I put this on the analyzer, it's 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 a little bit long. It uh, the wire's a little bit long. The frequency drop down, or the sweet spot dropped down slightly below the 15 meter band. That's not so bad uh, because I can easily uh, shorten it up by um, just adjusting right here where this um, insulator is. I'll just tighten these up um, maybe a couple inches and that should bring the, the resonant point up higher. Interesting fact, if you're building a Moxon antenna, a uh, wire gauge makes a difference on your wire length. A thicker wire will be a longer antenna than a shorter wire or than a thinner wire. Uh, this 18 gauge wire was, um, when I calculated it out using the MoxGen program, that little Windows application that I talked about in the original video, uh, came up with um, measurements with um, uh, lengths that were slightly shorter with the uh, 20 gauge wire than it was with the thicker uh, 14 gauge wire. It has a lot to do with the velocity factor. Uh, so, uh, so if you're going to be using, uh, so if you're going to be planning to build one of these antennas, make sure you do the calculations according to the wire gauge that you're planning to use. Uh, what I think my next step is, is that um, I'm not going to do the final tuning until I get this thing out into the field day site. So I'm not going to do any of these adjustments here. It's, it's still, even though it's a little bit, even though it's low at the bottom of the band, it's still under um, 1 1.5, or it's still at about 1.5 to 1 at the top end of the band. It's perfectly usable uh, the way it is, but if I want to get perfection, I'm going to have to do a little bit of adjusting. I got a lot of buildings around by me, and I think that it's going to, things will shift a little bit when I get out um, into the wide open. So I'm going to, I'm not going to do the, I'm not going to fuss with these and, um, and uh, wait for the final tune until we get it set up uh, for field day. But otherwise, I think it, it's looking really good. Uh, one thing I found is with the thinner wire, it doesn't hold on to my, these little hooks as well. I might have to devise some kind of system to kind of keep these in place. <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit of extra tape. Maybe I can, maybe I can fashion a 3D print something that can just kind of clip onto the end uh, so that uh, uh, this, this works a little bit better. I'm going to have to think about that. Uh, and Chuck, in building his, uh, he used a thicker pole, so he was able to use um, electric fence insulators, which um, would be actually a really good choice. Uh, but we're using these these thinner, lighter poles, so we're going to have to come up with a different solution. And I'm gonna, I'll work on that. Hopefully, I don't know if I'll have it ready for field day, but um, we'll come up with something for that. And uh, the second thing is, is the. Um, the center of the antenna, we're still going to have to use some PVC to support uh, the weight of the center connector. That's even at 33 grams, it still pulls it, uh, sags it down, especially with the feed line attached. So we're going to we're going to maintain um, using that spreader or using that that support pole for the center uh, uh, connection. We'll just run the coax up and over and down the um, and down the pole. And uh, finally, you're probably asking, well how, well, how am I going to deploy this at field day? Well, the plan is, I've got two painter poles, actually I've got three painter poles. Uh, this is my short one. <laughs> it's about, uh, it extends to about eight, nine feet. Um, my longest one extends to 22 feet. So we're going to use the uh, 20, I think 23 feet. We're going to use the long 23 foot uh, painter's pole uh, with this antenna. Um, I've got a support that I can um, anchor into the ground and then we're gonna guy it with some rope. And um, hopefully, I'm not gonna be able to extend it the entire 23 feet because there's gonna, it's gonna wobble an awful lot, but hopefully I'll get it up 15, 16 feet or so. And I think that'll, that'll work uh, really well with the antenna. Uh, some people wondered about uh, flexing this upwards instead of letting it droop down. Um, that's a possibility. I think I can do that if I come up with a better solution uh, for these corners. Um, as it is now, if I try to flex this upwards, um, the, the wire has a tendency to pop off the, 
off the corners. So we're going to keep it as it is and let it let it droop down. But the droop is a lot less than what it used to be, so it's not such a big deal. Um, let gravity do its thing, and that's one less thing to worry about. So <laughs> uh, that's the update on uh, the uh, Moxon antenna build. I'll have the next video will be a full report on how this thing actually worked in the field because we're going to have it out at field day. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day in 7.3.